Hey, Hearts teachers. This is uh, David Bunnell, Technology Coordinator, wearer of many hats, Hearts Academy. Um, this is going to be just a few quick pointers on Schoology, just a refresher. We spent all summer, we've forgotten how it works. Um, I'm just going to go through the way I use Schoology, Schoology and, and some of the tips and tricks I've picked up. Uh, you follow along. Um, part of this is uh, it's going to be a YouTube video. One of the things that one of the great parts of YouTube uh, I've learned is, from my son, in fact, is this little gear, the settings down here, in case it gets boring or I'm not speaking fast enough, you can always turn up the speed. I usually watch things at twice the speed and I can, if somebody's talking very slowly, speed it, up, speed it right up and, and zip through. If I miss something, I can pause and go back. That's the kind of the beauty of having stuff on, you, uh, on YouTube or on a video that you can just watch over and over again. All right. So how I log into Schoology is I just go right into the address bar and lms.lausd.net. And that just takes you right to Schoology. There's no, ooh, I'm already logged in, so you log in. Um, so first part, this is the, the main screen that I see when I log in. There are two places that get, you can log into. One is called Recent Activity. One is called Course Dashboard. Sometimes you log in and you see this, which is all the messages people send, and I've got LMS Champion, all these different people sending messages. That's you could be your landing page, it could be course dashboard. If you want to have the course dashboard your landing page, click on you, uh, you and go to your settings, and then scroll all the way to the bottom. And you see right here it says recent activity or course dashboard. If you want course dashboard, click on that. If you want recent activity, click on that. Click save changes. And then the thing you will see is whatever you want to see. A um, couple of quick tips about Course Dashboard. I know it's all the classes. I, one of the challenges with Course Dashboard is all your classes show up here, including classes you're signed up for. So like I'm signed up for First Cut, which is a Warner Brothers thing. I'm signed up for Mastery Grade, a couple of Mastery Grading things. And your course, your course dashboard can get quite full of classes during the school year because you've got your eight class, six, seven classes, whatever, and plus all your other classes. So one of the tips of using the course dashboard is if the classes are in the order you don't like, you can actually drag these around and change the position and order them however you like. So that's that's one little trick. Um, the other trick is I've created a sandbox class. A sandbox class is a class that doesn't have any students. I've just created it and it's where I can do a bunch of development for uh, my classes. So here's my sandbox class and you can see I've got some some resources I've made in the sandbox class and it's a great way to develop and, and get stuff ready to go before actually signing in to you know going into your class and trying to develop stuff in your actual class. This, this way, like if I have this and I've got three math sections, I can copy this from here into my three math sections. All right, so that's the courses. Uh, up here at the top, once you've logged into a class, you can click on courses and you will see icons of, of a bunch of your classes. Um, one um, challenge is that during the school year, you might fill this up and not see all the classes. So then you can either go back here to the, click on the Los Angeles and it gives you your course dashboard. Where you can see all, all your classes. You can also click on courses and click over here where it says my courses. You can click on that and it shows you all your classes. Now here on mine also your, all your archived classes, all the classes you've taught in the past are all saved here. So all, the, all my classes going back about three or four years have all been saved here with all the assignments and everything all done. And here is where you would actually, if you want to join a class, this is where you would, or not join, well, join a class, you can join a class here, but create your own course. If you want to create a sandbox course to practice in, this is where it's done. So that, now, so there's signing in, there's courses, there's the groups. Uh, if you have not been added to the uh, Hearts Academy faculty group, you should get added, so make sure you do that. And resources is a place to store a bunch of, of stuff. So for me, here's my my resources page, and I've got a bunch of folders. I've organized my resources so there's a, there's folders because having a whole bunch of stuff in this one root folder is, is confusing. So here's photography and 
in my photography folder I have a bunch of old classes and I have some other stuff I've been developing it's another place to hold resources um, and you can add resources all the things you can add in a class you can add here you can reorder your your list of folders or whatever resources you have you can reorder those now we go to um, public and there's a resources if there are any there and if you go to group right let's see where to go my glasses I need new glasses Hearts Academy faculty this is a uh, hearts resources so we have opening day August uh, Miss Willard added that resources for online instruction socio-emotional socio resources resources for students Hearts instruction now if you're doing advisory here's an advisory folder where theoretically all the classes have been added for advisory and all the resources each year people should be adding resources to advisory here's where to find them these can be like I did senior year last year and so here's a bunch of the uh, assignments that I I put a bunch of these assignments in um, and they can be copied into your advisory class directly from here just add these resources directly into your advisory all right so some other resources up here there's a message board so if you a message system in school GC you click on this envelope here are some messages that were sent to me and I can also click on new message and send a message to a student or a number of students. Um, so that's the message board. Any alerts go show up here. So if I've got grading to do, it might show up there. Uh, calendar will show all the assignments that are coming up and do nothing, of course, right now. And then these four little boxes right here, this is where you would add an app. So L LMS App Center, if I click on that, it's going to, oops, let's see. I have to allow pop-ups because I've just re refreshed this. So you probably can't you can't see the pop-up because of the way I have my screen recorder set up, but it launches a pop-up and you can search for different apps that are available within Schoology to add to your class. Um, so that's kind of the basic navigation. Let's go back to one of my class. Oh, and then another tip is all these pictures here were added by the various instructors like Warner Brothers added their picture I have added a bunch of pictures to my classes the mastery people made their own picture and you can also add gifts this is a class from last year and I found a really cool gift to add and so you can have gifts as your class picture and it makes it more interesting and, and fun for the students to have different pictures um, all right, so the main thing you land on in Schoology is the materials page. The materials page can hold assign anything you can add here can be added to your materials page directly. Um, I prefer having I now started adding folders, so I went back and, and added these folders, but there's also you can have assignments and various things with resources within the materials page. So this is an actual folder and this trick you see right here, there's a picture in the folder so it makes it look a little more interesting and then everything that's in the folder I've listed right here. So if, we, if you wanna click right here on this gear and edit the folder, you can publish, unpublish and all these different things. You click on this gear, here's what appears in the folder and the way to get the picture to show up like this is you make a, list, a bulleted list, you add a bullet at the top, then insert the picture once the picture is inserted, you click on the picture and you see this little picture of the picture. If you say alignment right, it'll move the picture over to the right where it is now. And then you all you have to do is delete this top bullet. And then you have the pictures on the right and the bullet list on the left. Um, it makes it look a little, little more interesting and professional. And there's nowhere you're going to find that listed in any online help thing. Just here. Secret tip. All right, so I'm just going to cancel that because I don't want to shave any changes. Uh, and then you can click on the folder, and here's all the stuff that's in that folder in my class. And it's a bunch of pages, so you can, um, let's just look at a page. Operational tip, and here's how we're going to, I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. Um, let's go see if I can find a better, now, notice I, there's two, once you're in a folder and looking at a resource, this link at the top is clicks you back into the folder this link up here clicks you back into the class so now you're outside the folder back in the class you can also click on materials to do that um let's see let's go down here to one of my prettier assignments 
Um, I did a little bit of development to make this look good. Um, a start here is a good example. It's just a page. You can use HTML. The, the way I got the blue and the yellow to show is in editing this page. You go edit page. Excuse me. There's the the. You can't make this design using these editing tools up here, but if you click on these little dots right here, it turns into HTML. And there's a couple of websites you can go and find code and copy the code and paste it to make it look like this if you want to spend a little extra time to make things look cool and interesting. So then HTML and you get it to set up and it looks like the final looks like this. Um, so there's this start here and then read that. And then this, I think this folder is set up to Yes, must view and so inside this folder, one of the options is student completion. That means they have to, you can set this up to have the students have to progress through these things in order. The, the, they do it in order. Um, here is a, a discussion. So I've added a discussion to this. And in the discussion, I added a link to the picture for Snopes and then, you know, made the instructions here. Here's the, they click on add the discussion. All right. So that's, just some basics. You can cut here and watch everything again or stop watching anyway. Uh, so that's just a, so that's the, one of the resources in the folder. Um, let's look at uh, an assignment. So here's a comparison activity. So this, this assignment on the student view, they will see over here a submit assignment button. The submit assignment button means when they click on it, they'll get three tabs, a uh, compose tab, which has the, the Schoology editor, and I think a upload tab and a comment tab, I think. I can't remember because I, I don't watch, the, I don't look at the, the student sign on as frequently. Um, but here's where um, Schoology gets a little interesting. You can add, like if I wanted to add a Google Doc to this assignment, I could. So when I create the assignment, so now I'm in the assignment, I'm going to edit the assignment. In the editing of the assignment, here's what the editing page for the assignment looks like. Well, let's give it a minute to log in. And down here, Google Drive assignments means instead of having the Google, the Schoology editor, we can have them edit on a Google Doc. That's a little bit tricky. So one of the things I do here is, uh, you can go into your Google. So if I want to click on that, it's going to take me to this page right here, which is my Google Drive. And then I could say, oh, I want this out the TPAC framework, whatever this, I can go in here and add whatever assignment that I've created already. I've added, made a, a let's say I made a, a document for them to, to work on. They'll, they'll see it and then each time, each time they open it, each student that opens this, a copy of that that document will be made for them. And now, I'm going to, I'm going to cancel out of this. Um, I'm going to cancel out of this, and we're going to go into Google Drive. Faster way to get to Google Drive: drive.google.com. So. Here's one of the tips for adding assignments to Google Draw, adding assignments to Google uh, Apps to Schoology, and I'm going to uh, zoom this a little. I've got zoomed in a little bit too much. Um, so here I'm going to have to look at. Oh, is this me? Is this? Oh, I'm. This is. I'm logged in. Me personally. This is something you have to watch. I actually logged in ahead of time, and it was still flipped back to me personally. So here's my Schoology folder, and I have to look very tiny. The way my monitor set up. Um, I'm sure you'll see it before I do. Schoology Master Copies. So I've made a folder, and in that folder, I have folders for all my classes. So here's a filmmaking class, so I'll double click on that. And here's all the documents I had that I added to a Schoology assignment. So it's really important for me to be organized online so I can find things. And, and then also very important to have as few resources in your root drive. This is the where you first see Google Drive when it says my drive. That's your root drive, the, the very top drive folder in your in your Google Drive. To have very few things there because when you log I was logging in before I had like a hundred different things. I had to scroll down through all kinds of stuff to find my assignment I wanted to add to my my Schoology assignment. But now that I've made my Schoology master copies 
um, I can easily, there's photography. I just go to photography and there's all, I didn't have as many uh, Google uh, Doc assignments in my photography class, so there's there are fewer there. But Schoology Master Copies, that's, so that's the idea is now I'm gonna make a different folder for each of my classes so I can easily find the resource that I want to add to whatever class I wanna add it to. Um, and I think for now, that's gonna be enough information on Schoology. Um, so watch it again, a uh, quick review. You're gonna land, the landing page can be either recent activity or course dashboard. You know, you're going, you're going to reset whichever one it is in your settings all the way at the bottom. So if you want to land all the time on course dashboard, change the course dashboard. If you want to land all the time at recent activity, do that. Um, groups, make sure you're in the, you, you've been added to the Hearts uh, Schoology group, Hearts, Academy, Hearts Faculty Schoology group. Resources are where you can store your Schoology, one place you can store your res Schoology resources. Um, in groups, Hearts Academy has a group, has a bunch of resources, especially for, um, let's see, where to go, especially for advisory. So if you're wondering, oh, what am I gonna do in advisory? Go into the Schoology resource and find out what they did last year in your class. Um, and then finally, make yourself a sandbox. And a sand, here's my sandbox where I develop different lessons and different resources in my sandbox that I can then, once they're perfect, copy them over to Schoology and have them just show up for your students and have them start working. So that's just a few of the tips for using Schoology. Thank you very much. And cut.